Okay. <laughs> Hello mga students. Pag-usapan natin sa ngayon yung underapplied versus the overapplied overhead. At ito hindi na ito bago. Okay? Hindi na ito bago in the sense na narinig niyo na po ito na inexplain ko last time or baka sa pagbabasa ninyo na encounter na po ninyo ito. This happens because we are using your normal costing or later on even your standard costing. Kasi pagdating dito sa overhead rates, no, we are using a predetermined overhead instead of using the actual overhead. No? Kasi pag actual ang ginagamit natin, eh the actual costing tayo dyan. So dito lang, pinakita lang dito sa exhibit na ito yung comparison ng actual cost system at saka yung normal cost system. Kaya dito, magkakaroon tayo ng over-applied or under-applied overhead because of the use of a predetermined overhead rate. Okay? Nire-record natin yung actual, pero we also have to capture ano yung overhead na i-apply natin sa production based on the predetermined rate. In cost accounting, manufacturing overhead costs are allocated to products or services within a period using predictors or cost drivers. And this process reflects the application of the cost principle which requires that all productions or acquisition costs attached to the units produced, services rendered, or units purchased. Okay, sir, ano daw? <laughs> Binasa ko, hindi ko naman naintindihan. Ah, oh, bahala kayo dyan. <laughs> okay, oh, ganito. Kasi gumagamit tayo ng overhead cost. At diba, once na na-determine natin, halimbawa, ito yung na-produce natin. Tapos ito din yung nabenta natin. Diba, ang ginagamit natin is yung overhead rates. So once calculated, this POHR or the predetermined overhead rate is used throughout the period to apply overhead to work in process inventory using the rate no? and the actual level of activity. Ang rate natin nakabase ito sa budget, kung magkano yung budgeted. Okay? Halimbawa, yung budgeted na, yung overhead cost mo divided by the, the budgeted na capacity. Okay? Yun yung magiging ano natin, ano, overhead rate. Tapos, i-multiply natin sa actual level of activity <coughs> or uh, actual level of production. Uh, excuse me for that. <laughs> Wala po akong COVID. <laughs> Nasa mid lang ako. Now, because of that, there is this applied overhead rate. Either in peso or in dollar, depende sa ginagamit natin ano, na currency. Okay, that is assigned to whip inventory using the activity measures that was selected to develop the application rate. Uh, ganito na lang. But you can also read this one. You can pause my video lecture and read this one. O kaya naman, basahin po ninyo sa libro. Okay? Oh, for convenience kasi, oh, remember na sabi ko nga, paulit-ulit, sir, paulit-ulit naman eh. Yung actual at saka yung applied, ginagamit natin. Remember na gumagamit tayo ng, oh, di ba, paggawa tayo ng T-account, you have your manufacturing overhead control account. Yung actual, nire-record natin as debits. Magkano yung actual na rent? Magkano yung actual na um, insurance? Magkano yung mga property taxes? Ide-debit natin yan doon sa control account. Pero kapag i-apply na natin, pag sinabi nating applied, ina-apply na natin, i-account na natin ito, let's say from the WIP papunta sa finished goods kasi nabuo na. Ang i-apply natin, hindi yung actual. Kung hindi, magkano yung applied overhead based on our predetermined rate. So that is your applied overhead. Or sa madaling salita, yung kinikredit. Okay? O, oh, tinatamad ako magbasa. <laughs> okay. Baka mamaya, binasa ko, hindi nyo naman maintindihan. Ipakita ko na lang ito sa inyo. Na exhibit 3.2 or uh, 3-2. So, yung, kung meron tayong T-account for the manufacturing overhead control, yung nasa kaliwa is the total actual overhead incurred. Ang nasa kanan is the total overhead applied. Okay? O kaya naman, kung gumagamit tayo ng dalawang control account for the variable component and then the fixed component, edi, o basta, regardless, kung isa lang yung minimentay natin na control account or dalawa, laging nasa debit side or nasa left side is yung actual overhead cost incurred. Tapos nasa kanan yung applied overhead. For example, alimbawa eto, we have the following. Variable overhead, budgeted amount, budgeted machine hours, predetermined rate. The same with your fixed overhead. Pero ang applied natin is itong 32,500 at saka 54,180. 
Okay? Oh, please take note of the amounts. Pakita ko ito sa inyo. Assuming sa ating journal entry, ang actual natin na overhead for variable at saka fixed, fixed ay ang mga sumusunod. 31,385 at saka 55,970. Ang total niya ay 87,355. Ito based on actual. Kaya pag gumawa tayo ng T-account dahil debit yan, nasa kaliwa yan. Okay, ito yan. Ano? Ito yung makikita natin dito. O kaya dito sa dalawa na ito. Pero ang applied natin na overhead is 32,500 at saka 54,180. Kaya pag tinignan po ninyo ito, ang debit natin, work in process, inventory, ang credit natin ay variable manufacturing and fixed manufacturing for 32,250 at saka 54,180. Uh, please take note, nagkaroon lang ng error ano, sa book. 32,250 ito. Okay, kasi yung in-apply natin ay 32,250. Okay, error lang po ito. That should, that should be $32,250, not 32,500. Okay, so you see here, eto debit, eto credit. Okay, ang credit natin is your applied overhead. Dinebit natin sa doon sa work in process. Kasi remember, di ba, pag mga overhead accounts, Pag overhead, naglalagay muna tayo ng control account, iniipon muna natin siya. Unlike pag direct labor, direct materials, diretso na sa ating whip inventory. Pag overhead, meron tayong control account. Tapos saka natin ito i-apply sa production. And that is your applied overhead. Okay? I hope nasundan ninyo, class. Okay, now at the end of the year, total actual overhead will differ from total applied overhead. because of under ano no of your application <coughs> maari kasi na kasi syempre yung predetermined overhead rates mo based on estimate eh yung isa naman based on actual magkakaroon at magkakaroon ka talaga ng difference so meron kang under applied at saka over applied pag under applied no under yung application mas malaki yung actual versus sa in apply natin mas malaki yung debit versus sa credit pag overhead uh, over applied overhead Mas malaki yung credit as compared sa, sa debit. Mas malaki yung na-apply as compared sa actual. Okay? O, tignan po ninyo ito. Ano? If overhead is under-applied at saka if overhead is over-applied. Ito naman yung effect. Saan ito i-apply pag dinidispose na natin ito? Kasi ito pong mga overhead, yung overhead account, that is a temporary account. At pag temporary account, di ba, Yung closing process, kinakailangan natin itong isarado. So, we have to close it. Hindi pwedeng may matitira dyan. Now, okay, under-applied or over-applied overhead must be closed at year end because a single year's activity level was used to set the predetermined overhead rate. Pari kasi sa susunod, iba na naman yung magiging basis natin for the predetermined rate. Okay, pag... Yung overhead ay under-applied, it will be closed, no? Closing the control account causes the cost of goods sold to increase. Ina-apply natin ito sa cost of goods sold. Pag overhead naman, ang effect naman sa cost of goods sold ay bababa. Pero please take note, ginagamit natin ito kapag immaterial yung variance, immaterial yung difference. Kasi kagaya ng nabanggit ko sa kanina sa isa kong video lecture, Pag material yung difference, we have to prorate, i-allocate natin ito sa WIP inventory, sa finished goods inventory, at saka sa cost of goods sold. Which is, meron naman po akong example dito. So, ayan, ano? Oh, Pag-usapan na natin yung disposition. Pag disposition, disposal. Pag isasarado na natin. Tatanggalin na natin yung ating ano, under-applied or over-applied. Over okay? O, closing the accounts... require disposition of the underapplied or overapplied para mag-zero out sila. Ang concept natin dito ay closing entries, closing process. And the disposition will depend on the materiality of the amount involved. Pag immaterial, mag apply ito. Na illustration natin, itong exhibit 3-3. Pero pag ano yan, pag material, i-apply natin yung proratia, prorate, pagpo prorate. Okay, dito muna tayo sa pag-immaterial yung difference. If i-close natin yung over-applied, 
i-debit natin variable manufacturing overhead. This is an example lang. Ano? Credit cost of goods sold, 3,250. Remember, kinuclose natin ito sa COGS at wala nang iba. Pag i-material, credit or debit sa COGS, depende kung under-applied or over-applied. Pag over-applied ka, credit yung mas malaki, di ba? So, i-debit natin para mag-zero. And then, credit sa COGS. Pag under-applied ka, mas malaki yung debit mo, meron kang debit balance. So, para ma-zero out yun, i-credit natin yung overhead control account. In this case, gumamit tayo ng fixed manufacturing overhead, credit natin yung cost of goods sold. Okay, this validate, na-validate ito. Okay, pag over applied, ah, pag under applied, tataas yung COGS. Pag over applied, bababa yung COGS. Which is eto din naman. Okay? Sana napipicture out ninyo class ha. Okay, please let me know sa comment if medyo mabilis ako ngayon for this discussion. Now, kung materially or significantly ano, different yung variance sa actual versus doon sa applied. O saan natin ito ay pro rate? Una, sa WIP. Pangalawa, sa finished goods. Pangatlo, sa cost of goods sold. And proration of the under-applied or over-applied overhead makes the account balances conform more closely to actual historical cost as required by GAAP for external reporting. Halimbawa, tignan po ninyo ito. Ang actual fixed overhead ko, 220. Ang applied ko, 260. Overapplied? Yes. Kasi sobra. Ang titignan ninyo yung applied, no? Pag sobra yan sa actual, over yan. Kaya sa overapplied. Pag mas mababa yan sa actual, under. So underapplied. Kung sa ngayon, eh, nalilito pa rin kayo sa under versus over. Okay? O, tignan naman ninyo. Um, for purposes of proration, meron tayong whip inventory, finished goods inventory, at saka cost of goods sold. Kasi material yung difference eh, $40,000. Ang malaki po ito. Especially yung overheads natin ano, ay nasa hundreds of thousands lamang. Now, para i-allocate natin ito, instead na oh, over-applied. Pag over-applied, sobra ka, may credit balance ka, i-debit natin yan. Pag i-material, credit sa cost of goods sold. Ngayon, i-credit natin ito dito sa tatlo. Pero yung tanong, kung i-debit natin yung overhead, okay, fixed overhead cost na 40,000, papaano natin ito i-distribute sa WIP, sa finished goods, at saka sa cost of goods sold? O, eto yan. Okay? Consider this one. I-total natin nga itong tatlo. Ang total yan ay 652,000. 45,640 plus 78,240 plus 528,120 that total is 652,000. Kunin natin yung percentage. 45 divided by 652, 7. 78 divided by 652, 12. 528 divided by 652, 81. Or kung percentage ito, 7%, 12%, 81%, for a total of 100%. Ngayon, yun yung magiging basis natin for allocation. 7% times 40,000, 12% times 40,000, 81% times 40,000, eto yung makukumpute natin. At yan yung magiging credit balances nila. 2848, 32,400. Pag tinignan nyo po yung journal entry natin. Ayan. Fixed manufacturing overhead, 40,000. Credit sa WIP inventory. Credit sa FG inventory. And credit sa cost of goods sold. Para i-close natin yung over-applied fixed overhead. Okay? Again, ulitin ko lang ha. If the amount of applied overhead differs materially or significantly, apply natin ito sa WIP, sa finished goods, and sa cost of goods sold. I hope na intindihan nyo yan. Uh, anyway, kung hindi man ninyo yan naintindihan, pwede nyo naman yan balik-balikan. Or kung naumay na kayo sa boses ko, hindi magbasa kayo ng libro. <laughs> okay? Sige. So maraming salamat. Hanggang dito muna tayo sa video lecture na ito. Oh, please let me know if you have questions. No? Don't ask. I don't ask. Oh, sir, hindi na ako magtatanong. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Until then, bye-bye.